What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and I have yet another mining video. Some more gaming videos are coming up this week as well. I will be and am currently testing the 1500X versus the 1300X just to see how well those extra four threads will perform for you in games. So hit the sub button if you're interested in that. And if you're interested in mining, you might as well go ahead and hit the sub button as well because I like both and I'm gonna keep doing both. But today we're going to be talking about the new beta driver from AMD, which is beta driver number 17.8.2. And that is the driver number specifically for the Vega Frontier edition, because that's the edition I currently have. I do not have RX Vega in hand yet, but there's some issues here. Alrighty, so to get things started off, if you're looking for the beta driver for this card, you're just going to go to amd.com, click support and drivers, and then go through the check checklist to pick the Frontier Edition card. The only reason I state this is you might miss it because it's not on the main driver page, but you need to click one tab over to beta to access this driver. And once you do that, you can download it and get it installed. I just wouldn't recommend it and here's why. Once I got it installed, I went ahead and re rebooted, did all that fun stuff, and come to find out, it took away gaming mode. So I have no access to Global Wattman. I can't change any clock settings or anything like that, especially because the compatibility with MSI Afterburner is quite poor. Now I say that, but it's better with the beta driver, meaning that now when you move the sliders, it actually does stuff. Well you think it does stuff so the things that it does work with is going to be like the power consumption and the fan profile and the temp limit those are the three things that work in afterburner the things that don't work the important things are going to be core clock and memory clock and i can say that because we're about to show you also another little bug that seems to be rearing its ugly head here so once i got it installed i started up claymore to go ahead and take a look now in this shot you're going to see gpo gpo <laughs> i work too much you're going to see gpu 1 and gpu 0 and the vega card is going to be gpu 0 and once we start getting it running, we notice that it starts out strong at like 30 mega hash a second, and it starts out at like 945 megahertz on the memory clock. But after just a few moments, it starts dropping down. And to figure out what was going on, I did open up GPU-Z, and luckily GPU-Z is detecting the mem clock and the core clock now. And as you can see quite clearly here as I pull this screen up for you guys, it is dropping from 945 megahertz on the mem clock down to 800 megahertz. And once again, like I said, using MSI Afterburner, I can't seem to get any mem clock overclock at all. So that was a lost cause. Now, once I started talking about this in some comment sections and on Twitter, I had a very friendly subscriber go ahead and shoot me over a screenshot of him with the same issue, albeit with much better hash rates on RX Vega 64. So even though RX Vega 64 with the driver, and I'll pull throw this screenshot up for you guys too even though rx64 with the new driver does improve hash rate quite a bit over what it was at it unfortunately could still have this bug because if you go look at his global wattman settings you'll see that while he has the miner running and he has the global wattman running and the mem clock turned up to 945 megahertz the little clock of the current mem clock above that the little circle is showing 800 megahertz so this is kind of good and bad news on one side on the good side i'll mention that first is that there is room for improvement with these beta drivers to where we probably are going to be in the best case scenario hitting closer to 40 mega hash now i hear a lot of people saying we're going to hit 40 mega hash on it but it hasn't really happened yet the bad news is 
the driver's not good and it's not ready to go into any sort of mining rigs and I would avoid it like the plague for now unless you are like me and just like playing with this stuff. And then all, by all means do it to let me know how the results ended up in the comment section below. Go ahead and tweet all your cool screen caps of your miner or your games if you're a gamer too. I, I, uh, I like that. You know, I do, but <laughs> tweet it at son of a tech and we can have a conversation about the kind of finer details and try to figure out what's going on. Now, as far as this beta driver for gaming goes, obviously it wasn't meant for gaming, A, so don't even worry about it for gaming. I wouldn't even try it. I, that's why I am not going to do a gaming performance video with this particular driver, but I can also tell you that the gaming performance scales in proportion pretty much with the memory overclock. I'll leave a link to in the description to Digital Foundry's review of the RX 56, and he mentioned that the best performance gains were when messing with the memory overclock. So that's been confirmed for gaming as well. And seeing that this driver seems to have some weird bug that knocks the memory overclock down to 800 megahertz, I would not use it for gaming either. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And as always, I will see you next Tuesday.